Hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial on getting power out of an induction machine. So we're going to go through uh, a basic induction machine and look at uh, how much power we can get out of it and when we start loading the machine how that affects uh, the output power in terms of how the speed changes and everything like that. So um, one way of, of starting this out again is to go back to our basic uh, two-pole diagram and just have a look at what's going on there. So here's our six poles, with their windings around them, and our rotor, and our rotor has a shaft coming out of it, it's on some bearings, and the output power from that machine is rotational speed times torque. And as we, we've discussed previously, the input power is three times the voltage, times current, times the cosine of the angle of the power factor. So let's, uh, let's say, for example, that this machine here is giving us 15 kilowatts. That's what it's giving us in the current situation. And it's doing that at 2,950 RPM. And that is roughly 307 radians per second. And we'll say this machine, it's a three-phase machine, obviously. Um, and it's two-pole, because it, that's what I've drawn it as. And it's connected to a 50 hertz supply. So what can we know about this machine in terms of power and how power is going to change? Well, remember we've got the curve between the speed of the machine and the torque for an induction machine and it looks a little bit like this. And at this point here is when the slip equals zero. At this point here is when slip equals one. Or in other words, the motor is not the rotor is not turning because uh, for whatever reason. Um, and then we come up through here through this peak torque point and then we come down to here. So here's our, our machine. We've kind of got most stuff we need to know about it. We can find out how things are going to change. Remember, the slip is a defining thing, so we need to find out what the slip is. Uh, we know the speed of the shaft, but we don't know the speed, the synchronous speed of this rotating field, but we can figure it out quite easily. Okay, And we know that that speed, that synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field is 120 times the frequency of the supply over the pole num the poles of the machine and that means in this machine it's 120 and times it's a 50 hertz machine we've said that and it has two poles so we go through that and that gives us a synchronous speed of 3000 rpm which is about 312.5 radians per second we now know the speed of the machine, the synchronous speed, the speed that the field's going around. We know the speed of the shaft, so therefore we can figure out the slip. And the slip of the machine is a ratio of the synchronous speed and the rotational speed. And that's it there. And notice that it doesn't matter whether it's in, this here as I've drawn it is in RPM, it will be exactly the same if it was in radians. It's just a ratio. So using these numbers we have here, synchronous speed of 3000 minus our rotational speed of 2950 over 3000 gives us a slip of 1.67% and you'd get the exact same answer if we went through and did the radians 312 minus 307 over 312 you get the same number we're close enough to it allowing for rounding errors so we now have the slip of the machine we know how much 
power output is it's it's doing we know the rotational speed we probably want to calculate the torque now so the torque we rearrange this equation here the torque is the power over the speed which is 15 kilowatts over the speed of 307 and that gives us 48 0.6 newton meters of torque. The question now becomes, let's say we load the machine. Um, we load it, we get it to do more work, such that torque doubles. So we'll, we'll say down there, what, what happens if torque doubles? What's going to happen? Well, obviously, torque is now going to equal 2 times 48.6 newton meters. And but what else happens? We can see here that if we're operating down here, we, which we are, because we know we've got a slip of, of 1.67%, so our, we're down here somewhere at if this is 0 and this is 1, 0 0.0167 is somewhere, say here, for example. Let's say it's there. And so that's our current torque up here of 48 newton meters. If we double this level of torque, we can go to here. And we can see that we're still operating in the linear area of this, of this curve here. So we can assume, because of the linear area, and the only reason we're doing this is because slip is low. If the slip was down here somewhere, then this wouldn't hold. We can therefore assume that when at two times the torque, slip equals, the new slip is two times the slip. So because slip is doubled, And our supply hasn't changed. It's still 50 hertz, which has got this rotating field at 3,000 RPM. That's changed. That hasn't changed, which means this is going to have to change. So we now need to find out the new speed of our shaft. And that's fairly straightforward. We can just rearrange that equation. The new speed of the shaft is... 1 minus the new slip times the frequency of the supply, which is 1 minus 2 times 0 0.067 times 3000, and that all comes out, and that equals 2900. RPM, which is the same as 302 radians. So our torque has gone up, it's doubled, 48 times 2, uh, 96 plus uh, 0.3, 96, 97.2 newton meters. Our torque has doubled, but our speed has fallen by 50 RPM. So whilst we've doubled the torque, we have not doubled the output power because the speed has dropped. We've doubled that. This, is, this has gone up significantly by a factor of two. This is going to go down, so that won't double. So we find out what our new output power is. Power out is rotational speed times torque. 302 times 97.2 gives us a new output power of 29.5 kilowatts. It hasn't doubled, almost doubled, but it hasn't because of the drop in speed. So that was a simple go through on output power from an induction machine. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again.